guys, it's your boy Alex, and welcome back to the Brave Lionheart channel, and you're probably noticing some different surroundings here, um, some posters right there. Yeah, this isn't typically my room where I, like, you know, record stuff, actually. This is actually a room in a condo down in Orlando, Florida. Yes, I have said many times uh, on my channel that I would possibly be trying to get a video down in F Orlando, and today is that day. And actually, this is one of the last few days we are in Orlando because we're actually going somewhere special. Um, I won't exactly show you where that place is, but I'll actually get there with the magic of video editing, which is right now. No, I need and phone. now, huh. never thought the magic of video editing would brought us here. But if you can't tell from the uh, parking lot signs, we're back at Universal Studios Orlando, baby! Yes! Now the reason we're actually here is something we've been wanting to do ever since we actually only went one year ago. We are back for Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights 2022, baby! Yes, we're actually back in... We're actually getting on the x layer right now, and my sister is excited, and she's actually here. You've seen Chris before in the last video that we did. We're excited, and this is actually Chris's first time going to Universal Studios Orlando and for Halloween Horror Nights. And my family are excited too right there. And we're excited, so let's get to it. And wow, normally, God. a trip to Universal doesn't start unless we are in the good old city walk, but it is very, very bright today for us, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and it's actually really, really packed here today. The crazy thing is, we haven't been to Universal since back in 2019, since, well, before COVID basically hit and shut down the park for about a year or so. But after 2020, they re they brought the pack park back up to speed. And they've actually changed some stuff right here. That Universal Studio store is right there didn't used to be in this area of City Walk. It used to be um, all the way that way, but yeah, they actually just moved this up and they made a lot of changes in some places, but the biggest changes are usually in the park. So we're gonna make our way there and see how things go. And now actually you can see me much better in uh, 60 frames per second. That HD resolution, man, or resolution. I'm tongue tied as always, guys. Um, I do want to get this out before we get to the main gate, but we actually went here a couple days ago since this is actually our sort of last day here in Orlando. We want to do some fun stuff. We went to Islands of Adventure, tried out some of the new rides they had, and surprisingly there was a memoriam over by where Islands of Adventure was at for the actor that played Hagrid since who sadly passed away this year. Yeah. Rest in peace, Hagrid. You and Fang will always have each other. That I, I can't even talk. Let's just get to the park. And yeah. Every single year, this sign gets better and better every year. And you think with them, they would have like more and more room. Yeah, she's excited, even though she wants to drink tonight and not be in the mazes. It's true. But yeah, you think they would have more room for the signs of the houses out, but I guess not. Look at all the people here ready for Halloween Horror Nights this year. It's no wonder because like Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios is one of the biggest Halloween events to ever, ever happen. And fun little fact, if you guys don't remember, I actually did do a Halloween Horror Nights video back in 2018 on my old channel, but had to delete it for undisclosed reasons and other things that happened. But now I'm finally gonna do my first ever Halloween Horror Nights video here of the new year, and we're very excited, because we actually have not gone to the event since 2018. We were gonna go uh, 2019 and all the other years before, but because of COVID and everything and how the park shut down after a year, and everyone was just like still trying to stay safe. It just didn't happen. So yeah, today's the day we are finally ready for this event. And surprisingly, um, yeah, as you can see, it's like a bunch of people are like, just still crowding up behind us. And the sun just got in my eyes, so that's that's fun. I'm just gonna have to like keep doing this so that way you guys can have, oh, actually my face is kind of like half dark so you guys can half see it basically. Um, but yeah, like I said before, this is uh, Chris's first time here at Universal Studios and he's never seen anything for Halloween Horror Nights, so are you excited? Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Yeah. He probably won't be saying that after a few of the first few mazes, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, we're actually here a bit early. Uh, supposedly the event doesn't start until 6.30, um, but normally they open the gates around 6. 
and they do tell you to basically be at the gate by around 5.45 when it does open early around 6. But the event officially doesn't start until 6.30, but you still can go into the mazes and check out the scare zones and everything, which we'll probably get a lot of footage of that. And I also should probably mention at this point in the video, um, I probably won't be able to get footage or footage of inside the maze because Universal Studios Orlando has that thing where you can't really film inside the mazes unless it's a certain like media night, which we did not come for that sadly. So no footage is or no footage of your uh, you know just something like that. I don't know what they were saying over there. But if you guys actually do want to see the mazes online, they do have footage of the mazes during the night it was open and during the media event. So there you go. Uh, but what I, what I will do is try to best explain what the mazes are that we go through. Something like that. creepy guys came up close so that's that's fun but now we should normally be safe around Springfield even though technically we know that there's always zombie clowns in Springfield yeah for sure. those are always the worst but hopefully to not oh okay well that's that's incredible Valentine. well I guess uh, as long as it's not like doll body parts or you know Chucky's heart basically now that I think about it what would Chucky's heart taste like why would you want to Probably about? death and decay, basically, or something. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But we're just trying to make our way to the back to see if we can get into one of the houses this year. And again, I'm going to try my best to explain the house since I can't record inside the house. So we'll see what happens there. So first up we have on the house night of the list is Descendants of Destruction. What I read basically from the story about this one, or you know, I'll try to explain it, but I'm able to get at least footage of the outside and what it looks like. And this doesn't look fun. That looks like a subway station sign, so that's gonna be enjoyable. That's gonna be fun. Oh, well, this is charming. There's death and destruction everywhere and lots of weapons. That was a drop. A lot of weapons to murder us, probably, so this will be interesting. Oh, okay, that is a good way to start off the night. Uh, so basically, how was that for you guys? It was a little bit scary. Yeah, there was a couple was things. She got jumped out like pretty quickly though. <laughs> I 
Uh, so basically, that was the sentence of destruction. Supposedly, you're going into this uh, subway tunnel, and there's like mutants and like mutations and gross stuff going on down there. And uh, yeah. I'm it a five. Oh, you give it a five? What about you, Chris? What do you give it? Um, I mean, I usually don't get scared, but that didn't even make me jump. So that's like a three. Well, I definitely would give it a five because I'll be honest, it got me at the end with something that came out of one of the curtains. Well, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. But if you're ever down by Orlando, come check this place out. Uh, definitely check this maze out first because that got me sweating a bit. Uh, love Halloween Horror Nights so much. All right, next up on our list, we have Bugs Eaten Alive. The future is now. Kills pests safely. Cools your home and purifies your arm or air. Okay. Okay, I wanted to have fun, but he made the experience way worse because I had to go first. Uh, but yeah. That was gross. Yeah, that definitely was was disgusting. But yeah, so that was um, Bugs Eaten Alive. Basically, um, some pesticide that the government invented, I guess, to get rid of bugs in a future home. But yeah, it just was a lot catch of- Catch us on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you'll catch them on YouTube a lot. But yeah, basically just some bugs that got infected with it and now they are mutated and basically invading the entire home and they made a nest of the place. And there was a psycho woman brandishing an ax saying she was going to kill them all. Well, good luck with that. But what would you rate that one this year? Two? Okay, what about you guys? What would you rate it? Like a one or a two. Uh, for costume designs though, what would you rate it? I liked that that big bug 1. was 5. huge. Oh yeah, there was a big bug animatronic spider in it. And that's the one thing I'm afraid of, spiders. Those, they are the worst. Uh, but yeah, definitely personally for me, creativity with the costumes, I definitely would give it a four. As an actual scary house, there were some things that got me a bit, like a couple of, not really a lot of bug ones, but I could tell where they were coming from. So that's gonna be that's gonna be fun for the next few houses. I'll tell you that. So we are definitely at another scare zone, and there's a person inside of there waiting to scare people. Hello, sir. Oh, hi. We're definitely, oh gosh, the fog. No, the fog. It's getting to us. Oh, geez. It's like a witch, a witch sacrifice or something going on. So she's definitely ready for a sacrifice. Oh! Yep. Gotta howl with the witch sometime. Wow. I don't know if you guys can actually see this, but this is some really good design work here. Hi. Oh, I guess, oh, hi. Yeah, you're a wolf troll. Then I have no idea what you are. Oh, oh. Whoa! They definitely are rocking to this sick beat! Oh, yeah! Oh, rock and roll! Next up, we got Horrors of Blumhouse 3. Um, Alright, so we're inside the maze, and we're actually... This maze is inside the Fast and Furious ride, which is interesting. I mean, both movies have nothing to do with cars, but this will be actually interesting. And oh, you actually can't see me. I'm kind of glitchy right now. Everyone is. Ooh, spooky ghost glitchy. But yeah, so this is actually the third Horrors of Blumhouse maze that they tried to do. Uh, a couple years they did. I don't know what the first two they did for the first one. Second one was the date we went, 2018. And they did uh, the first Purge and uh, Happy Death Day, which that one was okay. I'm excited to see how this one is though, because this year they're doing the Black Phone and Freaky. Black Phone not really being that scary, but more suspenseful with jump scares. And Freaky being an awesome like parody of Freaky Friday if the body swap was a psycho serial killer. So yeah, this will be fun. Okay, so we just got out of both Freaky and uh, the Black Phone. I don't know how they can make that like pretty scary, but there's a couple of parts where I jumped a little bit. How about you guys? Did you jump a bit? Yeah, yeah it was horrible. horrible. All the other Blumhouse ones that I've ever been to, which is only one, this was better. Oh, that is a statement right there from my awesome sister. You get you get a big brother hug. It that is a better. statement from her. Yeah, I will agree with her. That probably was like the best one out of every other Blumhouse one that has ever been. We've only been to the second one, but surprisingly, this one was the best one because Black Foam, they definitely knew 
how to make it scary. If you've never seen Black Phone, uh, click off this video right now and go watch that movie. It's not scary, but it is amazing. It's it's terrible. It's more or less suspenseful than scary, and there's jump scares in it, but that. They definitely knew how to make it scary. What would you give that? Uh, that was about a seven. Yeah, what about you, Mom? Hello, what would you give it? Uh, seven. You, Chris and Riley, what would you give that? Uh, I would say that's like a, out of ten, like a yeah. five and a half, six. Okay, uh, my sister already gave her a statement, so that's kind of like giving a number. I'm definitely giving it a seven, too. Definitely, hopefully that wins best house of the year, though. I'm just saying, that, that should win best house of the year. Oh, it's a Halloween parade. That's nice. Even though I think this is the sweet revenge one with the candy and everything going on. And there is a creature on stilts, so that is, that is definitely fun. Mr. Icy Cones. I love Mr. Icy Cones. Oh yeah, there's some kids definitely acting all rowdy because they're hopped up on evil candy. Oh. So we just got off the Mummy's Revenge, or Revenge the Mummy as it's called. Literally one of my favorite like dark ride coasters that they have. I know most people would say it's not really a dark ride, but technically it is. Uh, we rode it just again for a long time, and how was it? It was great. Yep, and Chris rode it for the first time actually. It was dope. Yep, he said it's dope. And agreed actually, it is very dope. Uh, so yeah, we're going into our next two mazes tonight. Um, yeah. No, that's that's creepy right there in the background. That's the scariest thing all night. Uh, but anyway, we're going into our two next mazes tonight. We're going into Dead Man's Pier, Winter's Wake first. And the next one behind it is Fiesta de Chupacabras. So I'm assuming it's about the, you know, creature that sucks on goat's blood. Or it's the Mexican vampire, basically. That's what it is. So I'm definitely going to cut it here, and I'll tell you how uh, Dead Man's Winter's Wake is, or... Well, actually, we're going to be seeing some pretty cool stuff up ahead that they're showing. Or it's just, it's actually just commercials for Peacock for their new lineup of horror movies coming out and like original ones. So, yeah. Okay, so we uh, just got out of Dead Man's Pier, Winter's Wake. At least I think that's the full title. Mom pulled onto my shirt like she did a couple years ago. That one was super pretty. Yeah, it was really well made. It wasn't like, that scary, honestly, it the was best part about it was, you know, I'm just going to spoil it anyway. Honestly, the best part about that, so supposedly we are in, I'm just gonna explain it. We are in a ship town and there's something going on with the town and there's like a siren going around, literally basically um, just cursing sailors, killing them and basically turning them into monsters. It's a lot of monsters related. I mean, that's what I'm guessing. Like, no, I'm not the story of it, I read it uh, before we came, is that the fisherman, his wife, died in the sea and he could hear she used to be a famous violinist and now she haunts them as a siren but it was his wife yeah the, supposedly his wife died but yeah i think honestly the best part about it was like being on an actual ship because we're in such a big warehouse they actually can pull that off pretty well i'm gonna say that probably is my favorite one what would you guys give it rating of dead man's dead man's piece or pier that's like a seven uh, seven for you yeah. Aesthetically, it was very cool. Oh, yeah, it's very cool looking. I'm definitely giving that one a 7, too. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be moving on to the next one being the Fiesta de Chupacabras, which I'm kind of still learning a bit about Spanish, which roughly translates to Festival of the Chupacabras. That's that's basically what it roughly translates to. Well, a lot of creepy masks uh, in this one. More or less a werewolf than a chupacabra more, like a little mini rabid chupacabra werewolf kind of thing but you got scared a couple of times not I as did. much I don't like uh, what did you guys think of that it was okay like, I got one good scare and a lot of like normal me scares. oh yeah uh, what do you think of the chupacabra mini rabid werewolf thing it was creepy 
Had definitely a lot of really good, well-designed masks, though, that they had. Uh, basically just started out as a festival and basically turned into death because the Chupacabra came and ruined everything. And everyone's just trying to kill you or either kill the Chupacabra. So that's basically what it is. All right, so next one we're going into is Halloween. Yeah, you know, Michael Myers and there's actually the standby entrance right there. So it shouldn't be too bad. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this is the Halloween based on the 2018 movie or more or less one of the Rob Zombie see, uh, reboots. And yeah, the, the reboots, they were not that good. Ooh, spooky lighting. Uh, but seriously, yeah. So we just got done with Halloween and surprisingly, it was actually based on the first movie. So there definitely was potential there for scares. I got scared a couple times by Mikey just not even popping out yet because he was in the closet. I caught a glimpse of him in one of them and it just, Dr. Uh, looked like the real Dr. Loomis. Yeah, they, they did. They had some actors that looked like the actors. Well, some of them did from the first movie, but Dr. Loomis, he had to shoot him six times because that's literally how he does it in the movie. But yeah, Riley, I think she had a couple scares there for a minute. Doesn't even want to say if she got scared or not. I did. Yeah, she definitely got scared. All right, show of hands, what would you rate Halloween? Seven and a half. You, Chris? Uh, five, because it was aesthetically yep. pleasing. Ah, uh, yeah, it definitely was pleasing. I definitely probably would give it a, maybe a 5.5, .5 because definitely there were some scares there. But we're definitely moving on to the next four houses. There is one here that I am very, very excited for and that is going to be the Universal Monsters one. So if we manage to make our way to that, uh, we definitely got some scare zones coming up, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, they're definitely playing some weekend stuff going on now. This doesn't mean that it's for the weekend. No, this is actually for Spirits of the Coven. So this is definitely a witch one. Uh, this one was actually right next to Halloween, surprisingly. So we're actually gonna make our way through it and see how it is. All right, so we just finished uh, Spirits of the Coven. A uh, lot, lots and lots of witches in there that have pretty much just taken over the entire town of Salem and just killed everybody. Yeah, that looked good though, right? Yeah, yeah that definitely looked good. What do you think, Chris? Sorry? What do you think? How did it look? It was good. The decoration was good. It was just a lot of random things thrown together. Mm, yeah, basically didn't really get much of the story except the fact that it's like witches taking over Salem, killing a bunch of people. But other than that, yeah. What do you guys rate it? And dead two. silence from everyone. Okay. Just, uh, two, another two. I'll give it a three just because I got scared a couple times by a couple witches that popped out of the corners and. There was a lot of like, you know, stuff hanging from the ceiling, a lot of stringy stuff. So that's, that's interesting. Uh, so we got like a lot of like more scare zones to get through to get to the last three. And uh, we'll see how the night goes. We'll see how things go. So I'm just sitting out here waiting for my family to get off. Uh, this monstrosity, if you can see it through the gate, the Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this one. Mostly because it's mostly a coaster that drops down and it's inversions. And that's not my biggest, like, I'm not okay with that, basically. Actually, fun fact, we I did say at the beginning of this video, we were at Islands of Adventure the other day, basically riding the Velocicoaster and the other new ride, which was Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure. And that one went pretty fast, but it just did tilting. The Velocicoaster basically makes you feel like you're flying out of your seat and it's it's not fun. It, it really isn't. So I am not riding this one, so surprisingly. Oh, and yeah, the, my sister got this from Spirit Halloween. It's the bitten off uh, lollipop of uh, Sam from Trick or Treat. Mine and her uh, favorite horror movie. So yeah. So I'm just waiting for them to get off. Uh, I'm just gonna keep the phone there for a second so it'll be safe. So just wait right here for them and then we'll hit the last three houses as best we can. Might as well also go to the tribute store to see how much the uh, this year's shirt is because it looks pretty awesome. Oh yeah, he's the 
weekend after hours nightmare um, we actually got one up here which is the Universal Legends Collide this is the one I'm very very excited for and hopefully it's a good one Wow I'm sorry I had to do the Bonanza theme but not gonna lie this is all of this is just on a big warehouse and it looks great so far. I was kind of hoping that we were at a castle at the start of it, you know, like maybe Dracula's castle or Frankenstein's castle, but I guess we'll find out what, where we're at we're, when we're inside. Woo! <laughs> that was good! That, that probably was one of the better ones, honestly, this year. There's a double scare. Don't do it. Yeah. No, listeners, you know she had fun. Let's get let's get a word from these two. Honestly, how was that? Didn't make me jump, but a solid eight. That's yeah. the best. How about you, so Riley? Far. I took probably seven or eight. That was really, a really, yeah. Really good. That really was good. That woo. And these like this was the one I was really excited for, and it did That's not awesome. disappoint. I got scared around like every single corner. The one that scared me the most was the mummy because we basically started out in Egypt and that probably was like the best set. Gotta get a word in for my dad. How was that for you? That was the best one. So yeah, far. well you heard it from him. That that might be like my top pick for like the best one this year so far. And funny thing, that was actually our first ever Universal Monster Maze to go into. That was the very first one we ever did. Uh, well. I think I definitely need to calm down for the next one though, but man, there were so many stuff in there that got me so good. Alright, so we actually just got done watching the uh, Academy of Villains uh, dance show, I think that's what it was. You know, honestly, they do so good like every year. Granted, we haven't actually gone to this event every year. This is our second time coming here, but they do good every single year, and it's dark. Well, not for long, just, and I just hit my hand. Ow. Uh, but yeah, that definitely was a really good show. They had like a lot of like pyrotechnics, flames and stuff, but now we're actually moving on to the next maze of the night, which is actually one of the two last mazes we're doing tonight, so, and then that'll be it for the night. So I'll see you there. like that one that was I don't really know much about the weekend except just by a song blinded by the light but they had fun though they definitely had fun yeah that was you awesome. all kept shouting weekend. no to the weekend when he died no. Yeah. No. yeah that's pretty much it I was kind of surprised how that one went I was gonna go in kind of be like okay so it's basically gonna be like a uh, maze they where you just hear mice. his music yep they did they took, put the two best mazes by each other so it makes sense well, we are now entering the last of the scare zones today, and it's the realm of the Pumpkin Lord. For surprisingly, this is the main strip where you can see all the scare actors from each different scare zone. Not every single one, right up there is the Pumpkin Lord. Good. Hi. There's a 
but one person is because we got one more base before we head out. And that is Hellblock Water. All right, so just finished the last maze of the night. I legit could not see where I was going half the time, and I didn't know which part of it had prisoners and which one didn't. It was a big open area. We were like the ones leading the group, basically. And even he wasn't even behind yeah, was me. She was. Like, it definitely was pretty interesting. Just demonic prisoners, basically. I think it still was kind of like my theory I was thinking before the event started that it was going to be, I don't know, someone must have opened a portal to hell inside of a cell block prison and demons are running amok and now the prisoners are demons basically. But other than that, interesting. So I'm going to cut the video here. We're actually going to make our way back to the condo just to get a good night's rest. Now back to the safety of the condo where we can actually rest. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Um, managed to get through all 10 houses tonight. Lots and lots of walking. Everybody's just tired right now, and I think we're all just gonna go to sleep, and then we definitely gotta drive back tomorrow soon. Uh, but hopefully we'll be well rested and we'll be back in the comfort and safety of our home and hopefully wait until next year to see what they do. Uh, so yeah, like I said, this will be my first official Halloween Horror Nights video on the new channel. Uh, hope you guys actually do enjoy it. Uh, with that being said, there's nothing else I can say right now because it's, it's very late tonight and I really need to get some rest. So without further ado, thank you all for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell to never miss a video. And with that, I will see all you awesome guys and gals later. Bye-bye.